Hey, I'm Lorenzo Desacara, and today we're gonna to take a look at my bedroom studio. So now that the channel is back up and running, I figured that it was a better time than ever to give a tour of my bedroom studio set up for 2020. So let's get started with the most exciting part for me, the guitars. So if you've been around my channel for a while, you might notice that there are a lot of new faces when it comes to the new instruments. Well, none of the instruments that I used primarily up until 2017 are here anymore. So let's get started with this one. So this is my 1994 Orville Les Paul Custom. So I bought this online on eBay from Japan in the summer of 2017. I did a bunch of research and found out about Orville guitars, which was basically just a Japanese Gibson brand licensed by Gibson. So it has a couple of modifications here. First off, it has been upgraded with DiMarzio Titan pickups and a six-way switch for extra tones. Now on a guitar like a Les Paul, I usually prefer the vintage three-way switch style, but in this case, I was loading it with modern pickups, so I figured why not have a modern switch? So this gives me a lot more tonal options, as you can see here, and I love it, especially for recording in the studio. As you see here, this guitar is thick and heavy, and it's also just completely beat up. I tried to get a shot here just to show you like how many dings and scratches and just where it has. For me, it's the best all-around rock guitar that sounds amazing for both rhythms and leads. And if there was a fire and I could only save one guitar, this would be the one that I'd reach for because it's definitely my number one guitar. This guitar here is my 2018 Paul Reed Smith SC245 in whale blue. I like this guitar so much when I saw it at a Long McQuaid in Vancouver that I traded three instruments for this. Yeah, I paid a hefty price for it, but I just connected with it so much that it was all worth it to me. I replaced the pickups on this with American Paul Reed Smith HFS pickups from the CE24 that I used to own, and I also replaced the tuners with Schaller locking tuners. At first glance, it seems a little redundant to own this guitar because I already have a Les Paul Custom, but this sounds completely different compared to that guitar. This one has a much fatter sound, like I would compare it to the paint bucket tool in Photoshop, and the Les Paul is like the pen tool. This next guitar is my Warmoth Stratocaster. It's a replica of the 50s Fender Stratocaster, I believe. So this guitar is my second newest acquisition here. I got this guitar through a number of trades. So it started off by me trading my Paul Reed Smith CE24 for a GNL Legacy, which I traded for this. I had been looking for a Stratocaster for a while to fill up my tonal palette, and I couldn't be any happier with this. This is definitely the best sounding Stratocaster that I've ever played to date, and I've played a lot. So it has Fender Custom Shop Fat 50s pickups and go to hardware. As you see here, the two knobs on the left work as normal, but the middle pickup pot on the right here has a notch that keeps it at 10, so it takes a little more effort to move it here. Honestly, I might modify the guitar later to remove that feature because I honestly think it sounds best at around 7 and not 10, so yeah. Otherwise, this guitar has just so much mojo and life to it. Acoustically, it's definitely the loudest guitar that I own. So this guitar here is the newest instrument. It's the Godin Richmond Empire, and I believe it was made in 2017. I felt that even with my Strat, I was still missing something in my tone palette. So I kept an eye out on the used market for guitars with P90 pickups. I checked Kijiji daily, and the moment that this appeared, I instantly knew it was the right guitar and made an offer. And yeah, I only got this for $400 Canadian, which is insane if I think about it because the Gibson equivalent to this guitar costs three times as much. So hooray for me. And this feels definitely a lot better than a Gibson, I'll tell you that much. So this bass here, this is the bass. It's a 2008, I believe. It's an ESP standard Surveyor 2. So 
I bought this in a pawn shop back in BC for much less than it's worth. I got it in new old stock condition with the original case. Like, when I looked over the instrument, there was no evidence of any playware, like nothing at all. There was still plastic on the instrument, and I didn't even take all of it off until very recently. Oh, and I gotta show you the best feature of this bass. Because it's an active bass, it requires batteries. But look at this little hatch here. Just makes things so much easier. And there's no plastic cover to lose, so awesome. So this acoustic guitar here is a 70s Epiphone El Dorado. I bought it off Craigslist in BC for super cheap. It needed work at the time, but I saw a lot of potential in the guitar. So I took it to a shop to have the nut and bridge saddle replaced and to have the neck adjusted. Right now it's definitely overdue for a major setup though, because I did have to move cross country and it's had to adjust to a new climate. And acoustic guitars are definitely more sensitive to that kind of stuff than electric guitars. So as a result, it's developed this strange buzz at the bridge that I can't really troubleshoot. So it hasn't really seen much use lately, which is a shame because it sounds really good. So I gotta get that fixed. This guitar isn't mine, but since it's on the rack, I'll show you anyway. This is my girlfriend Julia's Yamaha FG312 12-string acoustic guitar. It sounds amazing and I've used it on one of her songs, but I also find that I spend more time tuning this thing than actually playing it, so more often than not, it just sits on the rack. Alright, we're finished with the guitars, so let's move on to the studio setup here. This is my PC here, which is loaded with a Ryzen 5 2600 GTX 1070 and a lot of hard drives. It's the main computer for music production and heavy video editing and processing. So I have two BenQ monitors here, and the way that I have it set up is that I just have one default work monitor, and I have one set to the side so that it's easy to move around for different purposes. This is Reaper, which is the primary digital audio workstation that I use. For any musician looking for a DAW, this is what I highly recommend. These right here are just some cheap Logitech speakers. I don't even know the model name of them. I don't really use these for mixing. It's really just more for leisure use. This is the Shure SM57, which I am using to narrate this video right now. There's honestly not too much to say about it. It's pretty solid all around. This pair of headphones is a Sennheiser HD598SE. I've had this for years and it's my go-to set. I wouldn't say that these headphones are the most neutral sounding for music production, but the sound stage is just too good. My ears are so tuned to it that I don't really have a problem mixing with these headphones, but I do try to make an effort to use multiple references when I can. So let me go over what I actually plug my guitar into. This is the Pod X3 Live. So any guitarist out there might be thinking, wow, you're using a pod in 2020? What's wrong with you? Well, I've always thought that Line 6 is really good at designing their amp modelers and effects. It's really just the built-in cab sims that make them sound, well, not good. So that's why we connect it to this device that I'll show next. This is the Moore Radar. This is the secret sauce that makes the Pod X3 compete with all the Axe Effects, Kempers, Helixes, and so on. So I use this as a speaker cabinet simulator while while bypassing the built-in cabinets on the Pod X3. Here on the bottom, this is the Steinberg UR22 Mark II audio interface. This is where the microphone, Pod X3 rig, headphones, and computer speakers are all hooked up to. And on the top here is the Avermedia 2 Plus, which I use for streaming on Twitch occasionally. This is my Nintendo Switch here with a third-party controller that's basically a ripoff of the Oya controller. I don't know why any company would want to replicate the Oya controller, but whatever. I do like how it looks though, because it matches nicely with the color scheme of my Switch. This is my clip tuner that I keep handy so that I can tune any instruments quickly and easily. And this is my little container where I keep a bunch of guitar picks. I could have sworn I had more, so even with a place to keep them, I still find a way to lose all my picks. So this is my Marshall Valve State 10 amp. I don't really use this that much, but it's nice to have as an option if I ever need to jam or even use it as a recording tool. And for jokes, I figured why not show you this nightmare. Look at this. 
You can see bits and pieces here where I tried to be really good with my cable management, but I definitely gave up about a quarter of the way. Well, that wraps up the tour of my bedroom studio for 2020, so let me know down below in the comments what you think about this video and if you want to see anything more like this. Let me know what your setups look like as well. If you like what you see here, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to be notified when I upload a video to this channel. Anyway, I'm Lorenzo and I'll see you soon.